A lot of people wear fitness trackers or smart watches. I wear an Apple watch and on our ski trip to Colorado last week, I believe one of the features on my watch helped save my 16 year old son's life. I want to let you know that tonight he is doing just fine, but it was a big health scare for our family. And we discussed the importance of sharing what we went through in case any of you ever find yourself in a similar situation. Here's what happened. We ski a couple times a year and we've been to Colorado before. So last Tuesday night, we were just so happy to get up there after driving for two days because Southwest canceled our flight. This year we stayed in Dillon at about 9,300 feet elevation, right by Keystone Ski Resort. We skied on Wednesday and Thursday, and each night my family and I had pretty bad headaches, classic signs of altitude sickness, but nothing too concerning. We took ibuprofen, drank a lot of water to stay hydrated, and figured it would just take a couple days to acclimate. But by Friday morning, my 16-year-old son Kaze said he didn't feel well enough to ski. My husband stayed back with him, Kaze slept all day, and by nighttime when I checked on my son, I noticed his lips were a bit blue, and so were his fingertips. But it was dark, and it was late, and I couldn't really tell if I was seeing things, if he really was blue. Then suddenly I remembered my Apple Watch has a feature that measures oxygen saturation. I quickly put the watch on my son, and as those seconds counted down, what popped up was frightening. 66% oxygen saturation. We searched the internet, and the first thing that popped up from Yale Medicine said, if blood oxygen saturation falls to 88% or lower, seek immediate medical attention. And when we got to the ER, the official reading confirmed Kaze's oxygen level was 67%, just 1% off from the Apple Watch. The medical team immediately gave him oxygen, and within minutes, fortunately, his levels rose back up to 100% and his heart rate started to decrease. They did a chest x-ray, which confirmed fluid in his lungs. Kays was suffering from high-altitude pulmonary edema, which can lead to death. After returning to San Diego, I spoke with family medicine doctor Mark Shalotta with Scripps Clinic about our ordeal to get his perspective and advice for others. And I'm just so grateful because, I mean, I don't want to sound dramatic, but I honestly think that the Apple Watch helped, you know, save save my son. Well, I mean, it, it's that's actually an amazing story because, I mean, a lot of times we will hear it's like, oh, yeah, it was saying this, but, you know, nothing was wrong. And obviously the fact that, you know, pulmonary, you know, fluid was building up in the lungs, that's obviously quite serious. Um, so again, that's, that is actually a, a great and wonderful story that you're, that you listened to, you know, or looked at, uh, the data and said, okay, something's not right. We, we should be doing some things could have certainly progressed. Uh, again, there's no way to tell, but, um, if, if it wasn't getting better, then it, it would have just, you know, filled up more and more and then, um, would have had to be on oxygen or even potentially, you know, intubated or something like that pretty scary stuff. I asked the medical team in Colorado what would have happened had I waited until the next morning because I thought about just letting him sleep it off, but something told me to go in, wake him up, talk to him, and that's when I saw his lips were a little blue. Uh, they say that eventually it sustained oxygen of only 66%. Kays could have gone into a coma. His organs could have failed from lack of oxygen. And uh, I searched the CDC website, which says high altitude pulmonary edema called HAPE is, is uncommon. So I don't want everyone to worry about it. It only affects about one in 10,000 skiers in Colorado, but it can be rapidly fatal. And the risks increase as you go to elevations over 8,000 feet, definitely over 9,000 feet. And Carlo, I know a lot of people in, Col in California ski as well. Mm -hmm. We go to Mammoth and, and places like that. So I just wanted to share so that you kind of listen to your body. Scary and eye-opening. First off, how's Kay's doing today? He's doing okay. He went okay. to school. He's fine. They just told him to. Doctors told him to take a, a break for a couple days. Don't. He runs track, so they told him not to run track. Uh, a lot of people go skiing and snowboarding. We know a lot of people that are out there right now. Who gets this? Why? They don't really know. They said there could be a genetic component. Uh, they say it's not really affiliated with your level of physical fitness. It affects men more than women for some reason. They don't really know, but the Dr. Shalata says what you can do is stay hydrated for the several days before you go up and also ascending at a lower pace, like maybe fly into Denver. If you're going to Colorado, stay there for a couple days before you go up to altitude. But we've been to Colorado before. Nothing's ever happened like this. So, uh, you know, the doctor said a lot of people do call concerned. Mm -hmm. Oh, my watch is telling me this. My watch is telling me that about my cardiac function. He says if you're feeling completely normal, you know, don't panic. Don't freak out. Go for a 
follow-up visit maybe with your physician. But if your watch is telling you something that's abnormal and you don't feel well, yep. that is a good sign that you should go get checked out. You have more than one data point there. Yep. You have something telling right. you it's wrong. You have your body telling right. you something's wrong. Fortunately, you guys listened. Oh, Yikes. Yeah.